Welcome to episode eight of That's What I'm Saying, the podcast about hip hop, entertainment, dating and relationships, sex and all that, and social issues from a sometimes ratchet, but mostly woke perspective. I'm sorry, I got a candy in my mouth. Um, you can subscribe to That's What I'm Saying, the podcast in iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Spreaker, and Stitcher. Um, I am Sean. I am Nye. And I, what am I doing? doing right now i am trying to cleanse myself of kanye because he's okay. just being kanye right now do we have a name <laughs> for this episode we're gonna always do this i gotta um i don't know okay work in progress leave it yeah. open all right so i'm um, getting into our ratchet minute which it's kind of woke a little bit too depending on what your what your opinion is so of course, you know, I don't want to make this a Kanye podcast, but we, we definitely have to touch on it. So Kanye West, um, within the last week or so, he went by the TMZ headquarters um, and was saying basically how Trump is his boy and how he believes that 400 years of slavery was a choice. Um, and then Van Lathan, who was a staff member, is a staff member at TMZ, um, basically commenced to airing a boy out um on national television so how do you feel what's going on what are your thoughts Nye? you know um you know i just i i never thought i well the, the rant that he had uh, oh let me not touch that the rant that he had was it, it was it was hard to watch it was really hard to watch especially because um i think earlier mm -hmm. that day i watched um the interview he ha he had with uh, Charlemagne. Mm -hmm. Charlemagne came out to his uh, his office, which really looked like the sunken place because it was all white. For real, I'm like, did that look like a psychiatric hospital or what? Yeah, it was very sterile. Um, so, but you I know, it, yeah, very, but it really it really humanized Kanye because I felt you know you can tell he felt really comfortable with Charlemagne. So he was really you know in his in his feelings and really expressing himself really well. And it, and it really kind of made me feel, and it, it's so weird because I spent so many years not liking Kanye. And now when he's like at doing all the most ridiculous things, I'm like, I feel the most for him because I just feel like he's in such pain. Um, but it really humanized mm. him for me. But then fast forward a couple hours later, this little rant he did at TMZ, which was mm -hmm. clearly, in my opinion, induced by some sort of medication, some sort of drug. He just... Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I didn't understand it. And I, I felt it was very disrespectful to our ancestors to say they had a choice um, <laughs> in the matter because, you know, I mean, in, in any situation you do have a choice, but when the, when the, the choice is so extreme, <laughs> is it really a choice? You know, like they, like they went on monster.com and um, did a search for the best plantation <laughs> to work on. <laughs> right. And then, you know, and then also, that ha we are so we're like we we're, we're hundreds of years removed from slavery. Like we still feel the effects of slavery. Exactly. We're removed from the actual, actually being enslaved on a plantation. We're removed from that. So, my for everyone that says they they understand what he says and they 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 agree with him, I have three words. Mm -hmm. You wasn't there. You don't know what you would have done. You wasn't mm -hmm. there. You wasn't mm -hmm. there. So shut the fuck up. You weren't there. <laughs> I, you know, I am very, I'm very confused and I'm very disappointed at, at this point with Kanye West. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm questioning who is he? You know, this is the, the dude from the South side of Chicago. You know, his mother was an educator. His father was a black Panther. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking with all of this, you know, background and this, and this is, you know, this is the stream that you came from. How do you get from that to this, you know? And I'm looking at, you know, all this free thinking and move, and I'm all for it. You know, I'm a free thinker. I would like to think as of myself as one. I too am a free thinker. Um, you know, moving the conversation forward. I'm I'm for all of that. I'm for freedom of speech. You know, I I I believe that more than it's practiced here in the United States. However, I think that you have a duty and an obligation with your words because words are so powerful. So being careless and haphazard with the facts, you know, slavery, I don't I don't think it's debatable. It was a fact. How it happened and where it happened and you know the extremes of it. No, you know, like you said, the three we we weren't there. But 
we definitely could see the effects and the remnants of it. You know, I don't think any of us have tra time traveled back 400 years and found out whether it was voluntary or involuntary. You know what I mean? So to even make a statement like that, it's like, what, what kind of, what facts are you, are you moving on? Mm -hmm. You know, um, and that's just, you know, based off of the TMZ. Then I, you know, look back a couple weeks with, I, I watched the Charlemagne the God um, interview in the in the psych ward. Look, I mean, it looked like they were at uh, Bergen Pines. I remember this hospital back in the day. It was just so um, devoid of everything and anything. Um, and you know, just in that interview, did you see the whole thing? Because I, I I did. I watched the whole thing. I watched it. Um, you know, he kind of lost me. It, you know, when he said he felt like Clayton Bixby. You remember um, the character made up by uh, Dave Chappelle on the show? Basically, do you remember that the blind black guy uh, who didn't know he was in the clan? That was in the clan. I he mean, and this this is what Kanye West said that you know when people started, I guess, turning against his ideas and beliefs. He said, "I felt like Clayton Bixby." I'm like, "Well, you you sound like him too." Um, mm -hmm. Something else he said that I thought was really interesting and weird. He said um, when when uh, Kim went to Paris that he went to protect her. And he said not in a sense of protecting her basically as a man, <laughs> but to protect what sounds like her brand. So to mm -hmm. go there, he said, you know, I want her to be the flyest and I'm making sure that she's looking this way and this type of way. And I'm like, what kind of dude? It, what kind of dude you, you're saying that you went all the way out to Paris to be with your wife, not to protect her as a man, as a as a as a husband, mm -hmm. but to protect the the type of clothes that she's wearing for the public <laughs> to to consume her. Like it's all it's it's already sounded very extremely crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, something else that he said that the world, you know, what Charlemagne was saying is like, you know, I go to therapy, kind of opening that line of communication of bruh you need to sit down and talk to somebody. And he took it as, mm -hmm. you know, my world is my therapist. Basically, I talk to people. Um, I talk to myself and, you know, I, I get ideas and thoughts from different perspectives of what other people are saying. I'm like, that does, that's not therapy. That's to me can make you more crazy and out of your mind mm -hmm. talking to everybody and anybody about that's your issues. That's like when I, and I, I don't know how you feel about this, but that's like how when some people say that they won't go to therapy, but they'll go talk to their pastor. And I don't understand that because a pastor is not a trained mental um, professional. Unless he, unless they are. And I, and I agree with you. I, I, I do agree with you that that's not, that's not therapy. It's not. I mean, and you know, and then every therapist, I have, I have a different way of looking at it. Cause I don't think, you know, every therapist shouldn't be a therapist, but there are some things about the mind that only a trained professional can unpack and unroll mm -hmm. and, and help you to journey through it and make sense, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so his thought is he doesn't need that. Either he's above it or the stigma of it. He doesn't need that. You know, he talked to everybody else. Sound like a crazy, crazy person. That to me, that sounds like a, being egotistical. Like, I don't need help. I can fix this on my own. Which clearly you know. he can't. Clearly but he... Right. And but he does he does have some insight, I think, on a very base level of his mental um, state, because he says that I want to change the stigma of mental health, of, of being crazy and that this is basically a stream. So everything that he's saying is a stream of consciousness. So mm -hmm. almost like saying, you know, you're watching crazy in action. <laughs> you're watching. I don't want to laugh, but you're watching a mental health, his, his breakdown, which he calls his breakthrough, you're watching it, you know, like a live stream. Mm -hmm. So I think he is somewhat in touch with, you know, this is not that he's not all there, um, but not enough to make any monumental change in, in, in who he is and what he's saying. Um, he said that he was hurt by Jay-Z for not coming to Jay-Z and Beyonce for not coming to the wedding. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about it sounded like such a, a hurt and a pain that that's caused him, you know, one of the reasons, in my opinion, as to why he's speaking out the way that he is. 
I, you know, I'm, I'm, I will even venture to say that the whole reason that he is so wholeheartedly behind uh, Trump and so in support of him is because he felt snubbed by Obama. Obama. I, Ob I was, yep. And <laughs> I'm say? sorry to cut you off, but I definitely agree with that because um, that whole, you know, the whole part where he talked about Obama and how Obama said that he was his favorite rapper. He felt a way, he, and he kept saying, "You know, I feel a way. I just I feel the way, man." I thought, I thought that was like the cutest part of this interview. When he kept saying that, I just felt the way, man. But he he clearly felt the way when uh, Obama called him an asshole. That really he called him a jackass. Yeah, 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 asshole. Yeah, and he was that he really was offended was. that Obama didn't apologize to him. I'm like, well, bro, you was mm -hmm. a jackass. What would he apologize mm -hmm. for? For speaking, I mean, I think we all could say that was some jackass shit. You go up there and take that little white girl's little moment in front of the spotlight talking about <laughs> another man's wife should have got an award. Yeah. That's that you you did a jackass thing. So yeah, I think he was moment. so hurt by that mm -hmm. that which caused him to be on his MAGA, I'm all for make America great again and, and me and Trump got me and 45 got dragon energies. And it's so it's so unrealistic for him to say that because of of the Trump campaign and, and, and Trump become president, that is in in his way is motivation to him to say I can do this too. Um, what is it about 45 that makes you feel that you can follow that you would even want to follow in his footsteps? Trump hates everything about you. You know, you know, going back to um the Central Park Five, when he took out an um, mm -hmm. article in, in the paper about, about these kids who were, you know, um, tried and convicted of raping this woman, and years later found she out through DNA it. evidence, and the guy confessed that didn't boyfriend. even do it. Mm -hmm. She recanted her story. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was her boy. Was it her boyfriend? It was a, I think uh, it's her it boyfriend was, or something. She, rec she, she went back. That was. Back. What happened? What I, when the documentary that I saw was the guy was in jail. Um, was this Hispanic guy was in jail and he actually confessed that he did it to someone else. And, and that's how it came out. I didn't hear that it was her boyfriend. Oh, maybe I'm, um, maybe I'm admit, you're talking about Central Park five back in the eighties. I remember. Right. Our story. And that's mm -hmm. where they got, they got the, the, the term wilding. Wild. So they said, yeah, know, these, these beastie boys were out here wilded. Okay. But that's another story that I do remember that. Um, but, yes. I'm, but, but what I'm saying is this man has a history of really attacking black people. So how is this your idol? I just don't understand how that is your idol. But didn't you get from him in the, the Char Charlemagne interview, he seemed to me very fearful. And really, I mean, his legs, he was like moving his legs a lot. He had gold fronts and blonde hair. Um, he he seemed it wasn't the Kanye that I think we're so used to seeing. He mm -hmm. just you know he seemed like um, watered kind of watered down and in fear of something. That's just what I got from it. Um, and then you know just in the, the thing the other information that came out where he said you know I went and got lipo because I was trying to impress y'all. Like yo dude who who go <laughs> what I don't know of any man that ever goes and gets a tummy tuck and a Brazilian butt lift, unless that's some shit you do on a stage as a drag queen. Like, like who does that? <laughs> it's somebody that's married to a Kardashian, because they well, get they, surgery all the time, you know? And that just that please. just goes back, that goes back, there was like this meme that I kind of, it kind of grated my nerves a little bit, uh, where it says, um, I can't, I don't remember what it says verbatim, but really the essence of it is, your wife can really determine, um, like the outcome of her husband, like your your yeah. your support system, and it's 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 clear it's that so his support system is 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 um lacking. I, I mean, look, it's, can you imagine? And I think that yeah, was the, the conversation was like, if he had a black woman in his life, we as a we would not be dealing with half of this shit, because sister would have taken him aside, taken his phone, hacked into his Twitter, like sit your ass down somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're not having this, but instead, you know, he's, he's with a Kardashian. So what is she doing? Showing, doing what she does best, showing more of her tits and ass. You know, I heard she was traveling to Vegas to go see Cher, you know, doing that, deflecting as much as she can, mm -hmm. um, off of this situation. So, you know, it, it does take, and it's unfortunate, you know, because he does, obviously 
he does not have that in his life. Cause yeah. no, I don't think any black woman who's worth her coins would allow this brother to slip like this in mm -mm. public. No, no, definitely not. He's he's definitely missing a strong foundation. Clearly, he is. You know, I just I always say that even though they they are they're very family or, oriented, the, the Kardashians, but they're very superficial. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all to me everything is a facade. Well, they've you know, capitalized. And of, of saying, right, they've monetized every yeah. everything about the everything about their their life. So right, right. So instead of of, of him, you know, he, he clearly he picked up a lot of weight. Instead of saying, get your ass in the gym and let's get a um, a trainer. A personal <laughs> trainer. Personal, your your option is to go to light bulb, you know, like, to go, I'm gonna to go out here and cook you. I'm gonna get some, we're gonna we're gonna make some healthy healthy meals. <laughs> I'm gonna mm -hmm. stop, we'll stop making <laughs> barbecue ribs and we're gonna and we gonna meal prep over here. <laughs> <laughs> For real, we're gonna eat more vegetables. Don't worry, we're gonna mm -hmm. do this. I obviously he does not have that, you know, and it yeah. and it shows. So it's unfortunate, you know. There there's a the backlash of you know take him off the radio and you know Kanye's dead and we gotta let him go. And I'm I'm not quite there with it, you know. I'm I'm yeah. still I I want him to do better and I want I want to see better from him. Um, I think this is gone because yeah. I, I was like, is this a is this a way to sell albums? Are they calling it albums now? What do what do you say when you? Say? I was I don't I don't I don't know I don't know what to call I don't know to call them CDs or albums. I, 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 I just don't I don't know what to Downloads, call them. I don't know. Because really, what I do is just I just go on title and I listen to it. I, I was saying so. I was telling somebody it was like, okay, how many records? It's like, what am I saying? A record? <laughs> but but you know, there's a, there's an article that I read by Ebony um, saying that there's a Detroit um, radio station that that wants to ban Kanye. Mm. And I think that's just really extreme. I think it's really extreme um, because we do have a thing of freedom of speech. You know, we may not agree with what he's saying and it may be nonsensical and it just we can't relate to what he's saying, but he still has a right to say it. You know, I, I agree. I, he has I, a right to say it, but I, I think I, I what think he's saying is dangerous. Like I said, words are very powerful. But, and, oh, but man, at, at, mm -hmm. at the same time, when you say that, these same radio stations, and even though I think I mentioned this before, I'm a, I, I love hip hop, I'm a huge, and which is crazy because, you know, like I said before, it's violent. Some of it is violent and misogynistic, and I know all the fucking words to it. Mm -hmm. But the radio stations still play that, and that's even more detrimental to our community than what Kanye is saying. But I, I and I'm I, an adult. I, I, I can tell. I can, I can, I can separate fact from fiction. Fiction. So I know these these artists when they when they rapping all this stuff. I know they ain't living this life, but you know, but I do recognize their kids that are listening to this who, who may not be able to make that distinction. That's more harmful than this Kanye rant. But there's a difference between, you know, Amigos or Kodak Black, you know, going to meet Trump and Kanye West actually having meetings with this dude and this dude, number 45, is tweeting back, you know, I, I love Kanye, they're having this love fest. I think it's a difference there. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you gonna have, offset, have offset. Um, um, uh, go and go and, go and meet and go Trump. But what? But what? But what can be more? What can be more readily applied to everyday life for these kids? The lyrics they hear, or what Kanye is meeting with the president? They know they can't meet with the president. That's not really what is realistic for them. But these lyrics they listen to, that's more relatable, and that's more some, that's closer to something they can actually do, and it's, it's what they see. So. To me, it's the same thing. If you're gonna ban Kanye, then ban these these uh these artists with these you know these lyrics. I I'm, I think the ban Kanye goes too far. Like I was saying, I just I'm very careful about, and this is this is my ongoing you know my issue is how and do you separate the man from his masterpiece? You know, separating the artist from his art or the words. Like, can you and do you? And I think we do have a duty. To do that because they they have a they have an obligation have to be obligation. responsible for what they say and how they say things, and, and words are like I said very like powerful. powerful. So, Kanye, I can't jump on a bandwagon with you as much as I've loved your music and I play it and you know you've got me through some some moments and you know I'm in the car like speeding off fast because I'm listening to a Kanye song. As much as I appreciate the the art. I'm listening to you, dude, and I'm like, are you, I mean, you like, you're no better than some of those, uh, you know, back in Africa when, you know, you had 
brothers that were selling that brothers to the slave traders. What, 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 how, how do I know, how do I know that you won't that completely and totally sell us out? Sell us out. Like you, like, like you're doing you're right, now. right now. Like, are you for? Like, are you for me? Or are you like against me? Well, I think he's made that. I think he's made his position clear, and I think it's been a, a progression. It's it's been ta- it's, it was slowly happening over the years, but he's clearly made his uh, decision of what, what side he's on. As what side he's on, I think he's clearly made his decision. So he's not he's not on our side. I say our side. No. I mean black people. He's not on our side. No. No, he's not. Mm. I don't. I don't. I don't feel that he is. Okay, but you, but you have a sympathy have for him, and a I do have. I do have. I have a sympathy for him just because I understand grief and and it, it can manifest in your life in different ways. So in mm-hmm. that part, I I just I feel for him, and it and maybe that's the nurture in me just wants to give him a hug and and talk to him and and give him the the space to like to really express his feelings. Um, but on the other hand, you know, he still is, he still is the Kanye that got on my nerves just magnified right now. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So it's, you know, I don't know. My position with him right now is I don't really listen to his music. I never really did. I probably won't listen to his music now, but I still have this, I still feel for him and what like he's going through. Like I'm mama a hug type? Cause that's what yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if I, if I was, and his family or his sister or, you know. Come here, baby. Yeah, yeah, because he doesn't have that. He doesn't have yeah. any brothers and sisters. Um, I don't know how, what his relationship is with his father. Um, and he did mention that in his, um, and he, he needs that. In his uh, interview, he said he's, he flew some of his cousins in from Florida to come stay with him because he, he needs that. Right. You know, he's with the Kardashians and they have a huge clan, but them ain't his peoples. Yeah. They don't relate to him. They, I don't care what he says. Kim cannot relate to him. Well, it's obvious. Obvious. It's obvious. Yeah, she can't. She can't relate to him at all. On a surface level, she can. On a Hollywood level, she can't. On an entertainment level, she can't. On a on a but BBL Brazilian butt lift level. Butt lift level. <laughs> right, right. But but on a real, come on here and and let, and let me <laughs> come over here and and I'm gonna give you a hug and you can cry on me level. Yeah. No. I don't believe that's happening. Not there. Yeah. So though I was, I thought it was interesting that the name Kanye, he broke it down, means the only one, and I think that's so fitting, especially for what is going on Mm -hmm. right now. What his name means. Mm -hmm. Um, and just you know, I don't know if you saw all of the slavery was a choice hashtags. Hashtags. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I was so here for it though. Oh my god, I couldn't go to sleep. I couldn't go. I couldn't close my eyes. Because they just they, they just progressively got funnier and funnier, like ooh, from the plantations and from, from the um. I can't even get it out. It was just it, it was it was too much. And I'm telling, I mean, you had some people who were like, you know, we shouldn't be laughing about this. You know, this this is not funny and um, blah blah blah. And I'm like, you know, I felt like. You know, we we are some resilient ass people. Like we will take mm-hmm. something as you know as serious as I believe this was and it is, and make light of it and make memes out of it. I mean, I I think that's yeah. a, I think that's a power that we have. You know, that we can take some real sad shit and turn it into some comedy. And that's you know that's why our comedians are the funniest out because this is what we do. So I was, like I said, I was so here for it. I was I couldn't do this. If slavery was a choice, hashtag was the by far the funniest. Yeah. Black Twitter, black Twitter will always win. <laughs> black Twitter wins always. Don't even try to fight it. Ooh, I saw some great ones. I'm like, man, we need to. There needs to be like a a black Twitter award ceremony or something for this stuff. Like, <laughs> ooh, I was like. Dying, 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 laughing. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, all right, so moving forward, um, what did you? Moving, have? I want to, I want to touch on this, uh, Camille Cosby, really quickly. I don't want to, I don't want to like stay on it for a long time, but mm-hmm. she made this statement on. Um, she wrote a statement. It was like a soliloquy. <laughs> it was, it was long. <laughs> I didn't. I'm not even going to read Facebook. all of it on, on Facebook on behalf of her husband on on Bill Cosby pa- page, and in it. She likened him to Emmett Till and to Daryl Hunt. And both men were murdered or they were convicted of raping a white woman, a white, a white woman. 
And she likened this situation of her husband to that. How disrespectful. It was was so disrespectful. It's disgusting and it's disrespectful. I don't know if this lady is delusional, if she's in denial, or she just don't Mm -hmm. give a fuck. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But you know, I've read um, somewhere, or it was an um, interview where, you know, they would go traveling places and they would be in a hotel and he would have a hotel room for them. Mm-hmm. And he would have a hotel room for his little escapades. Um, and I call them rape dens. He had a, a room for his rape dens. And then also, you know, she would be home when some of these uh, rapes would happen. Of course. Of course. So, a, right, but, Chick, you knew what was going on. I, clearly she knew what was going on. I, I can't even imagine how dysfunctional that household was. You know, and you know, his, 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 um, one of his daughters accused Passed Mike away. Tyson of rape. Oh. Well, accused uh, Mike Tyson of rape. I, I don't know if it was her or not. I don't know if it was her or not. But but his answer to that was, um, oh wow, I didn't know. Didn't that. want to press charges against Mike Tyson, but wanted him to get therapy. Wow, and that was, I didn't that know was, that. That was that. Yeah, and this happened like maybe like in the nineties. Um, so that was his response to that. But the question I, I have though, and I don't, you may be able to answer. You you have a um, a background in law. Is that why wasn't he convicted of rape? He was convicted of aggravated indecent assault. Well, why wasn't it rape? Well, I think a a lot of it was the statute of limitations, you know, particularly where they were. That mm-hmm. you know, and that's what that's what most of these women were saying. You know, the embarrassment of it. Like by the time you know, now you're talking about all the physical evidence is gone. So you know, what prosecutor in their right mind and wants to keep their job? is going to move forward with a criminal case where, you know, the evidence is, is happened 20 years ago. You know, there's, there's nothing there. So there's, there's, I think a lot of it, that's, that would happen. That's what happened to most of these cases, you know, just, just the time, the sheer time um, that had tra- transpired. So. So now that he's been convicted, these, these women, can they go after him in a civil case? Well, it depends on the set again, the statute of limitations. So yeah, they oh criminal case, yeah, they can always and honestly not I, criminal I, civil, I, they talk about the civil cases, but I, I really think we we don't know all of the civil cases um that were settled out of court against this or you know, for, mm-hmm. by this man by this man. So I'm willing to mm-hmm. bet that there were, you know, cases that maybe didn't go to court. Um, but they started with a demand letter and that demand letter uh, created a release that was signed. So nobody would come forward and nobody would sue and a check. Trust mm-hmm. and believe that there's probably plenty of that that happened over the last, what, 30, 30 something odd years, 40 mm-hmm. years or whatever it is. So um, definitely, definitely, you know, what do you think about his um his uh, the Cosby show being pulled off the air by certain stations. Oh, you know, I, I, I think for me, like I, I wouldn't even watch it anyway. I'm so, I'm so disgusted and, and filled with just, it's the filth of it. Um, mm-hmm. you know, it, he's had a great body of work, but again, he's a sexual predator. I don't think I want to see that knowing mm-hmm. that somebody's getting some, you know, some, he's still being paid off of that. I just, mm-hmm. but I don't, there are other actors, but it's financially impacting the other actors that were on the show as well, who had nothing to do with what he was doing, you know, in his personal life. Mm, I'll take two hundred to. I'll take two hundred for. I act a girl. I, I just. I can't even get it right. I, I hear you, but I'm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say the same thing, you know, and it's unfortunate. But mm-hmm. I don't think, you know, everyone should profit off of what this sexual predator did. Now, I'm all for, for like the forgiveness. Like if there was some some uh, realization and coming forward and speaking his truth and, you know, I think it'd be a little different. But to be in abject denial, you and your wife for mm-hmm. all of this time it's it's just like of the 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 so many stories that came out and and what we know and what he's all, what he admitted in the deposition how he it wasn't a this is not a made up story so 
Mm -hmm. you know, for him to pr still profess his innocence, like, how do you drug a woman, or put, qua what did he say, put quaaludes in a drink, he called it the the, the uh, leg opener or something, how do you do that and not admit or at least acknowledge that that shit was wrong, and that mm -hmm. that, that's, it's sexual assault, it's, yeah. you know, no matter how you cut it, I just, I, I don't understand that, like, that to me, like, okay, that's insanity, that's, and then you, you have, Camille, who, how could you disrespect, you know, a, you know what a lynching is? That's a lynching is basically, it's a, it's a mob, a public, a mob of people who, who kill most likely a, bl a black person, kill them. I don't, she's talking about, you talking about figurative lynching. Get, get, get the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, that, that comparison was just, it, 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 it was disgusting. Just like Kanye's, um, whole slavery was a, a choice, uh, statement. It's, that's really disgusting. And it, it's really, um, disrespectful of our ancestors of our ancestors like you're gonna take 400 years or something that you you weren't even there and say that it was voluntary i just the same thing like man yeah. get the fuck out of here <laughs> that's how i feel that's how I'm yeah really <laughs> just get in with that yeah Please. So, okay all right i'm yeah anyway i'm tired of talking about them i'm tired of bill cosby i'm tired of kanye i'm just okay but well, we got we have one more coon to talk about <laughs> That's um, uh, my secretary. Did you call Coon? I did. Look, I'm my saying coons and all their coonery. So <laughs> coons will be coons. We got, we got, coons, will coons. One, 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 we got one more coon story to, to finish, and then we can go. <laughs> so, HUD Secretary Ben Carson, I know you've heard about this. He mm -hmm. has proposed basically an overhaul of HUD, which he runs. Um, which he has program. no experience. It just okay, okay, so like the brain, brain surgeon, and I'm saying that he he is clearly he's, shit. he's smart. He, he's very smart. He's a brain surgeon. What was it? Did he um was he the one that separated the conjoined conjo yes. twins? Okay, yes. so yes, he's he clearly did. smart. And John Hopkins, Hopkins. Hopkins, remember he was he was in our in our stopping ground. Yeah, John Hopkins in Baltimore for a while. Um, um, yeah, he, so um, has so no this, experience in housing. So this program, <laughs> what he proposes is um basically tripling doubling and tripling the housing subsidies for rent recipients so basically they would have so the way that it would work is it would require them to work so they'd have some work requirements their rent would spike and in his mind this would quote unquote incentivize people to get on their feet so here we go with that what um was it w.e.b du bois or um What's the 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 it peanut? Was Booker T. Booker T. Booker well, T. Yeah, this, Booker T. Booker Washington T. was the one who pull you up by your bootstraps. That's Booker bootstrap. T. And and W. B. Du Bois was the ten percent. You know the right. the cream of the crop right. bullshit. Mm -hmm. Um, but so anyway, he's saying this is an attempt to give poor people a way out of poverty. So basically, you're gonna make poor people poorer, and that's gonna be a way out for them. <laughs> ben Carson. Yeah, and it's it, it's a huge mis misconception. Um, a couple of weeks ago um trump has made a statement about um recipients of um of federal funds um mm -hmm. having to work to get these funds which clearly he doesn't understand how that works because most people who receive assistance from the government oh, already goodness. freaking work they're working one two and three jobs these are like the most right. hard-working people ever who are working so hard to make ends meet who Nine times out of ten, don't make these ends meet. Their ends never meet. So right. to, to make these statements, right. just, you can just tell they're just so detached from that reality. Right. Uh, it does, um, name, I, I don't know anybody. I don't know anyone who doesn't work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> every, every person I know on, on every economical, economical level in my family, yep. they work. They work. Everybody. So, you know, the, but this is this is the war on poor people. This is the Trump administration's war on poor people. You know, I mean, you, how where can you have a brain surgeon who grew up in Detroit? So obviously, you know, he didn't have a silver spoon in his mouth. But to to speak this way about people that I'm sure you've come across and you know in your at, in your lifetime and say that the best thing for them is taking away their resources. I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, you know, what I propose is, you know, increase the taxes on, you know, all, on the wealthy people, on, you know, on business owners, because that will, you know, incentivize them to invest. 
um, and maybe, you know, strike things and make it a little different in the economy. Um, instead of just, you know, what they do now is they rely on tax breaks, you know, to increase their wealth, like actually incentivize that, you know, those, those people, but no, the best thing to do, um, is to make poor people poorer. And that, that's, that's, to me, that is the, uh, that's what the Trump administration is really all about. So, um, tired of talking about that coon, uh, hope it doesn't pass. Yeah. Moving forward. I'm over it. I'm over it. All right. right. Um, do we have, we really didn't do, it was, it was, I think Kanye was ratchet, kind of woke. Um, okay. Who are we talking about now? I think we're doing Donald Glover, right? Yeah. Donald Glover, he dropped a video. I guess it was either last night or this morning. I saw it this morning. This is America. A yes, very yeah. poignant. It was yesterday. Okay. Cause he performed it on SNL. Um, very poignant song message. This the is visuals America. of it. Yeah, the visual of it. Um, it was amazing. He's he's so talented. This guy is so talented. I think we're just seeing it too. Like we're just we're just learning and seeing it and I'm I'm excited to see it. So mm-hmm. God please don't do a Kanye because I'm I'm looking well, he, I'm are, like, he has a white girlfriend. I think his, his girlfriend or wife, she's white and she's pregnant, so but oh, you know. oh really? You should have seen my face just drop. Like, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry to punch him. Hey, he's so cute too. He's okay, such a okay. Cute. I'm gonna be like, okay, all right, okay. I'm gonna ride with it. I'm gonna ride with it. But I, I, I watched the video. Um, this is America, and I just like the first thing that that just it strike me was all of the shit that was going on in the background. You know, the the guns and how the guns were treated, and how people were like you know, shot and, you know, left around and, and dragged away. And I think the point of it was just showing like this, all of this stuff going on in the background, the whole, it was a distraction. Um, and that is, you know, representative of America. This is America. And he's, he's saying it, you know, don't catch it. Don't catch it slipping now. You know, it's like, this is America. You got to stay woke. Um, I think the video really explored kind of, you know, Look, we got our own issues with terrorism right here in the confines of the United States. This is what, you know, people don't like to put a put a label on that. But, you know, whether you're talking about, um, you know, the way that our people are treated um, and, you know, the issues with gun control and, you know, how guns are handled and gun violence. You know, we have terrorism right here in the United States. And I think this video, it, it touched on that. Um, but I think it I think a, a, another good um point of it is that, you know, when these tragedies happen, um, we're focused on it maybe for a day or two, a week, and then we get distracted. Absolutely. And I think that was like the main underlying tone America. of America. yeah mm-hmm. of the video is that all these things happen, but then we always get sidelined and sidetracked mm-hmm. and our, yeah. our, uh, our, I mean, you know, our energies I mean, move, our energies move towards something that, you know, like dance crazes and, you know, social media and all, all the stuff that are really... Distracted, distracted. I mean, and look at the way, I don't mean to cut you off, but look at the way that we get our information. Like, you know, and I'm looking as we get, get into Twitter and it's like, you know, look at the way we get our, our news, you know, and it's it's like instantaneous. And then, you know, you have to scroll down and you're on to the next, you know, it's it's a thought, you might retweet it, you might, you know, take a picture of it and, and share it, but then it's done, you know, that's, that's the society that we live in. This is America, that's how we, how we deal with things and we become desensitized to a lot of a lot of the issues so i'm 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 thinking did you see that in the video i'm like okay this is that's how it's speaking to me yeah that's and that's and i i got the same feeling from it as well um it really i watched it maybe like two or three times and um it's i always just have these feelings of of i'm just not doing enough for this for our situation. Um, it's like, what can you do? What to do? Um, Mm -hmm. and so what I, what I, what I, I've just taken a personal kind of vow to myself is that I invest in black businesses. I invest in my friends. Um, you know, if they have a, a, a product or a store or whatever that they've started, I always try to support. I have friends that, that do, um, outreach for the youth. I always, you know, um, don't necessarily volunteer, but I always financially contribute um, when I can. Um, I promote their their things. And I think that's what, I think that's the least that we can do. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. we may not be the ones that are out there on the front lines protesting and doing all that stuff, but I think the least that we can do is just support our our community, and support our, you know, that's that's what we can do. I, I don't know. It's just. No, you're you're exactly right. I think, you know, I think you and I shared a sentiment like we're not getting on the front lines with, you know, our picket. We're not getting on the picket lines and with our with our signs. And, but it's you know, on the front a, lines in a, in a different sense. But that, know? but I agree, and that's, you know, I think if we take it, it, it only takes one. So you know, like even for me, I'm like I'm never going to Starbucks again. I wasn't a fan anyway, but just for the treatment and y'all gonna have one day off of like racial training and how to deal with us better i'm done that that for me is my protest um but I'm you know done. i i actually commend the uh the ceo for that because that's a that's more than what most companies would do really so you yeah. commend him for doing what for having that um day off having that training. Day. yeah having that training because what h and m a few months ago they had that campaign where the little boy had the, the uh, I'm the coolest monkey in the, in the jungle t-shirt. What did they do? We were all up mm-hmm. in arms. And I, I boycotted, I, I'm still boycotting, and my friends don't don't shop there anymore. Mm-hmm. But what did H&M do? They did, did they even acknowledge what they did? No, so on, on that level, I really commend him for, for taking that stance um, and shutting down his business, because that's, that's loss in revenue and doing mm-hmm. a sensitivity training. Um, yeah, I don't think it's enough for me. I, I'm just like it and it probably because I'm not it's saying not, it's enough, but I I, I, I appreciate the effort in it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think these are the things that the way that you know our our protests and also I think to be vocal about it. You know, I don't want to be of that, you know, we're just talking and all we do is just talk. But I do think and I understand the importance of the conversation. So, you know, and that's why I think this podcast is important because for all the ratchet. You know, we do want to stay woke and and share some of the some of the topics that people need to stay woke about, um, because that mm-hmm. you know it's it does create a snowball effect. So and and I'm kind of with you, you know, trying to figure out, you know, how how do I make a difference and and you know where can I where can I be of service? You know, whether it's running my mouth on certain things that I'm passionate about, um, making sure that my brothers and sisters are treated fairly you know, not exploited, those, that's where I want to be. So, and it's, it's like a, it's an ongoing thing, you know, looking at a a lot of these situations, it's like you're forced to make a decision. You know, I was, um, I was going to say this when we were talking about Kanye, but I did want to bring this up because I think this is, you know, I'm not the only one that experienced this. So I went on a business trip this past week to the New York, New Jersey area. And I told you about this. Um, but the the people that I was meeting with, and mind you, we spent four days together. I would consider them really good friends of mine outside, you know, really good business associates. But they're both um, Italian males in their 50s. Um, and the conversation, and they're very, they are very much Trump supporters. Uh, the chick, the, the, the black chick that got on talking about, you know, People should get over slavery. Candace Owens, I think they love her. Love, absolutely love her. So the conversations that we have over dinner, you know, I find myself being the quiet black girl. You know, I don't it, because I, it, I, I, there has to be a line drawn. You know, we do business together, and that's fine. They have their political opinions, but I'm like, these are the same people. You know, I make money with them and we do very well. But at the same time, I'm listening to this and I'm like, I, I it, it's just so far from who I am personally. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I it makes a lot of sense. Um, when I was um, in in the corporate world, it's always like I had to silence my inner my voice there because at the end of the day, I'm just there to make money so I can go home and, and you know support right. myself. You know, right. and it's and and I think that's the challenge that a lot of black people have when who work in, in corporate environments uh, where they are the minority there. Um, it's just something you have to do for survival. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm like, what do I need to take you a know? knee like, up in here? Or do- <laughs> right, this is this is this is a choice. But look, just like slavery is a choice, this is a choice we have to make. You know, to survive. 
Exactly. So I'm I'm still like that was it was it was really interesting. I wish I was like, damn, I wish I could videotape this because I'm sitting here and you know, I'm I I have on a, a slight smile and I'm listening and I'm like, I've been it's almost like I've been allowed to be to listen to this this these conversations. And you know, they weren't they weren't disrespectful, but it was just a view that I'm like, I don't I don't understand it. I don't get it, you know. You know, they one of them they called it's like, what has Obama done? Like Obama's done nothing for and nobody. And I'm just listening, like Do you think they were um do you think they were censoring themselves because you were there? No. And that's what I'm saying. They no, and and, and again, it wasn't disrespectful. It was just this is this is regular everyday talk of people who sit around and watch Fox News and they love, you know, they listen to every single drop of it and take it as law and as fact, every single thing. Um, and I just, you know, had and I wouldn't even call it an opportunity, but just a chance to sit in and hear it because, you know, in their mind, in their mind. And I know they don't believe that I believe everything that they're saying. It's just the freedom of speech. You know, we're allowed we're allowed to express our opinion. And it's just very interesting, you know, like do I take I'm I'm not gonna take a stand, like this is my money. Like I know how to separate it, but I would never, you know, we we can't we we can communicate and in, in I'm a in a capitalistic manner, and that's what we're doing. It's business. Mm -hmm. But personally, I can't rock with you. I don't yeah. rock with you. Mm -hmm. But as long as we can ex respect each other and we have we have those boundaries in effect and it, I think it works. So, you know, and this mm -hmm. is why in my mind, I can't throw away a Kanye because he's expressing what he's saying. You know, what he's saying is, is this is how he feels. Right. Um, does it equate to the product that comes out, you know, his work? And, it, you know, maybe maybe it doesn't. So still an open, an open conversation. Um Okay, I want to move on. I'm ready to talk about some dick. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't circle back over to Kanye. Lord have mercy, we cannot keep this man out of our mouth. <sighs> okay, all right, so moving on. Let's, move, let's, talk, let's, let's talk about a dick minute. Are we ready for the dick minute? Yep, we're ready for the weekend dick minute. Okay, weekend what dick minute. What you got? So, <laughs> there was an interview that just magically appeared. It was an interview from 2015 that DJ Khaled did with The Breakfast Club. Um, and someone found this, this, uh, interview and where he says that he does not perform oral sex. <laughs> however, however, mm -hmm. he wants his dick lick, but dick he won't lick, lick your, your cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we, but he, he said because he's a man a and there are different rules. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's a king and they're just di different rules for, man. for and I, and I, I don't, I don't know what his sex game is. Uh, I'm just gonna go off of appearances, <laughs> and I'm just gonna make an assumption. And just That's so it wrong. Out. That's so I'm wrong. wrong. But I don't think he's damaging anything in the bedroom. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Maybe the mattress. Don't think mattress. <laughs> right. I don't think his dick game is strong enough to not lick the click. I just don't. And you and we had this conversation last <laughs> week, and I, you know, I said that. I, you know, I could give it, I could take or leave like oral sex performed on Girl. me. But however, but let me just say this. However, if you're requiring me to do it to you, then you're going to have to do it to me. You know, you can't, it has to, it has to work both ways. And I'm not saying that I won't do it. I will do it. I'll do it until you finish. <laughs> but it has to be reciprocated. Like you can't demand that of, of me, but then you won't put your face face down there oh, I, you and you know how i feel about the situation like look that is a deal breaker for me that is I, look uh, either your 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 game is so strong that we can forego it uh, for uh, 30 days or something i don't know but it just cannot be a permanent we just say never we ain't never do that get out of here i can't even do it and you know i'm listening <laughs> i was listening to his i saw his interview and he said that basically, you know, the things that he does. So he provides, you know, the house that she's living in and, you know, well, all the clothes all the in the closet. And that well, equate to why he doesn't give head. And I said something, I was like, you know what? <laughs> if I had a choice between my food, clothing, and shelter or some bomb ass head, I might be a naked, hungry, and homeless bitch. If I'm <laughs> well, I guarantee you, if that's his stance on it, his 
his wife is getting it done from somewhere. Oh, definitely. And you now that you know they they put out like a bunch of little videos and you could see her working with a trainer, whatever. She's yelling at him. I'm like, that's why. She <laughs> that yeah. It's such a it's such a release of just all the tension that has built up. And if it's done right, like I said, all you need to do is spell your name <laughs> in the pussy and it'll work. It'll be great. I just, but that, I, mean, I think, I just think even, even with that aside, maybe he just doesn't feel confident in his skills, but even putting that aside, I think it's just a selfish stance to, I think it's just very selfish for you, for him to take that stance. You know, when you're in a relationship, I always say, I'm going to cater to you and you're going to cater to me. It has to be reciprocated. Exactly. You know, and I, I just exactly. think it's very selfish of him. So I can just, and, and for him to say, I, I do this and I do that and I provide and I buy this, and you got this house, you can you imagine living with someone who brings that up all the time? Because I'm I'm pretty sure he does. That mm-hmm. would that would make me leave. Exactly. That would make me leave. Don't throw that shit in my face. It'll just be a matter of time. Because I I I, I agree with you a hundred percent. You know, I remember I dated this guy, and he didn't like getting head. And but it really it was really like some old psychological Madonna complex. Like he just didn't see the woman that you know he whatever he loved it like giving head and I, you know I'm just like okay that's one thing but Khaled is saying he actually likes having oral sex you know performed on him he's just not reciprocal like that's totally different so you know what it is you you like it you like to receive you just don't mm-hmm. like, like to give and and really to me like that's the woman that's your wife or that's not even his wife what do you I mean he's like she's like uh well, they've been together for a long time I believe I know, I, it's fiance. I, okay, whatever, whatever the term, the the common law wife. Um, to me, like that's the decision that she needs to make. If y'all are in a relationship and you're in about pleasing your wife, mm-hmm. or you, then that's something that that's she has the final say. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't want head. Like what does she say about it? So I'm just, you know what? Then you look at him, like you said, and I'm, you know, it looks are not everything, but you can look at him and tell. This shit ain't on point anyway. So maybe, you yeah. know, you were, you know, rejected at some point in your life. Mm-hmm. And now you decide that you are now you're a provider. So that makes up for all of the rejection that you got sexually. That's my take on it. Callie. Well, you know, Callie, good luck to you um, <laughs> going forward. Um, if that's your stance, I'm not sure the quality of your relationship, but, um, you know, good luck. There you go. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So Ooh. moving forward, um, are we at the reminisce moment? We are at the reminisce moment. We are, and Yay. my reminisce, yes, is Dougie Fresh and the Get Fresh crew. Now, before I even get to the song, mm-hmm. let me tell. You, I love Dougie Fresh. I think he yes. is like the ultimate true entertainer. His career has spanned like thirty years. Yes, um, I've seen him several times. Um, not recently, you know, maybe within the last 10 years, but he always is, he, his stage presence is amazing. He always gets the crowd hype. Yeah, crowd motivator. He really, yeah, he's just really good at what he does. And I, I'm just really proud to, to know that, you know, he was, he started back in the eighties and now he's, he still looks good. His body is still, you know, he mm-hmm. still is in shape and he's doing it. So, uh, my reminisce is keep rising to the top. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, I always say, like, stop. <laughs> yeah, my days were always like wrapped around Yo TV Raps and Rap City. And as soon as they came on, I was in front of the television. Because I live, you know, I, I was a little suburban kid in Virginia. So hip hop was on TV for me. So. <laughs> so when this song came on, Oh my God, it was like the ultimate party song for me. And I just couldn't wait to get old enough to go to the clubs and and dance and whatever. But yeah, this is my song. And I just found it so amazing that um, like all these hip hop jams, they all were sampled by like these old R&B songs, Mm -hmm. which is like amazing. Um, So there were two songs that were sampled. Um, One was Keep Rising to the Top by Kenny Burke. And the other one was Ain't No Half Steppin' by Heat Wave. They were oh, the two wow. major um, 
samples, but yeah, girl, this was my jam. This was my jam. Yeah, I, re I remember this song, so you, and it's it's my jam too. And it, you know what? You can still play it, and it still rocks. Um, mm -hmm. But I remember Dougie Fresh, you know, with his red leather outfit, kind of like Raw, when Eddie Murphy did Raw, and he had one with the shoulder pads in it. His that was Yes, and his curly kit in his hair. You thought, well, you got good hair? Like, no, that's a, that's a no. curly kit. I, I learned later. <laughs> it was a curly kit. But real, but real side note real quick, don't you just love the, the um, how Dapper Dan is just like coming back now? Don't you I just love it? it? I mm -hmm. love it. I love it. I love it. He is really getting his due uh, right now. Because, you know, back in the day, they, they Gucci and them, they shut him down. Oh, I love it. I love it. So I'm, yeah, and I, re I remember that look in the video. I remember the girl that was dancing. I, I wanted to be like her. If there was a girl in the video, and really she was just dancing to the crowd, but she had the kente cloth poofy hat on, and her hair was like asymmetrical because I had my hair cut like that. Back <laughs> like, I wanted my point right by one by my, my lip and the other by my temple. Like, I wanted my hair just like that. So, I, but don't call them stacks. We used to call that hairstyle stack. Get your hair stacked. I used to call the the asymmetrical cut, or they called it the um, what was the name? The China doll cut, or um, I can't think of the queen. It was like a they had like an Egyptian name for it, and I was like, I was all I was there for it. Like I would get my hair cut. That shit looks so bad after a couple of days though. Like you can you can rock it with your points. I was like my points. <laughs> yeah, points. But you know what? You can always tell who did it themselves and who went to the shop to get it done. Yeah, who did who cut their bangs? <laughs> who did that to you? What happened? <laughs> oh my goodness! But that was that was good. When did when did that song come out, girl? That song came out in nineteen eighty eight. Ooh, wow. yep, I was Girl. there for it. And I think if I remember correctly, because I I was in New York around that time, and this would come on the radio, and I think Wendy Williams, like this was a song that she would play, I think, but it was WBLS, so it was before it was Hot 97, it was WBLS, and this was like, it was on heavy rotation. This to me was like when songs were a little longer, so they would play the extended version with the um, do, 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 do. So yeah, do you know that Dougie Fresh is a Scientologist? That that one when I learned about that, that threw me for a loop. And this, I I read that, and I'm like, wasn't he like a five percenter? Stop as a Scientology. I don't know. I don't know where that came from, but um, but <laughs> to give I, I I love some Dougie Fresh, and he used to live in the Maryland area, probably the same time I was there. So he would, you, you know, you would see him at all the parties between mm -hmm. him and um, uh, what's his name? You you got what I need. Oh, Biz. Yeah, he still lives there. He still DJs a lot. Yeah, Biz Markey. So you yeah. used to see them a lot at, at the mm -hmm. party. So mm -hmm. good reminisce. Good reminisce. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, do we have um, anything else? Um, I think uh, that's it for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but can we, I just, I just want to, I don't know if we're going to be able to stick to this, but at least like the next two episodes, I do not want to talk about Kanye. I, I agree. <laughs> I, I, we can look, we can, we can do that. Not a problem. Um, I'm done. I was done last week and then this nigga went off again and said some stupid shit. So. Uh, and I'm, I'm like, you're not gonna take over my, you're not gonna take over my podcast. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you said I'm, I'm done too. So we, we will not talk about Kanye yeah. West. All right, next Kanye, episode. you done. Yep, party you, done. You best not say nothing else. <laughs> so, um, party I think, <laughs> I party done. I think we can end on that note. Um, let's see. We okay. So we go through there. All right. So. To all our listeners, you can subscribe to That's What I'm Saying, the podcast and the Apple Podcast app, Google Play, SoundCloud, Spreaker, and Stitcher. And guess what? We are now on iHeartRadio. Bitches is doing some shit over here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? So... <laughs> Please share us, recommend us, leave us reviews. We need it. You can visit us at that's what I'm saying podcast.com to learn more. Like I said, send us questions and comments. Um, you can shout us out on Twitter. We are getting our Twitter game together. It's that's what I say three. 
Um, we also have a shout out that we always do to our lovely producer. Yep, at Vegas World uh, Inc. You can hit him up on Twitter. He holds us down. And also, I like to thank all of our new followers that are um, on That's What I'm Saying podcast on our IG. Thank you so much for tuning in to us. Um, thank all your likes, all your DMs. We appreciate all the love. And I'm just so glad you decided to come in and listen to what we got to say. Thank you so much. And if you have a black business, we can start this up next week because I actually have one. I just want to get all the information. You have a black business and you want to be featured, please hit us up because, like I said, we are all about yeah. forwarding forwarding us, moving yeah. us forward, okay? Yep, exactly, exactly. So you, have, you if you have a black business, you can email us. Um, you can DM us on IG or um, Instagram, um, not Instagram, Twitter. Um, but yeah, on we definitely want to highlight Find it. us on the on Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> on a twit. Then it's a twit. <laughs> All right. Well, until next time. All right. We out. Catch you next week. Drop, drop it on the random. <laughs>